and uh, it's a really an opportunity thank you to the whole organizing team arti ma'am parul ma'am vijay lakshmi ma'am abhishek sir ramya ma'am for giving me this opportunity of taking a session in this refresher course and welcome to my esteemed colleagues and fellow faculty members who are participants in this program so it's always a different experience to interact with fellow colleagues in kind this kind of research and refresher courses because normally we mostly interact with students but this time we are interacting with each other as colleagues and as learned professionals so thank you and uh, with this let me start the session so i hope my slide is visible yes it is visible okay so uh, basically please uh, feel free to write or raise your hands and let me know if you have any queries because so that we can discuss in between so, so uh, today's session is on interesting topics and new developments that have taken place in in fact this entire refresher course is being conducted in that background so in the field of finance there are many new developments that are coming in and many of you who are teaching or researching in finance would know that finance is more of quantitative in nature and is more empirical and data based and analysis based this is evident in the way we teach finance and also the way we do research in finance so there are three key things that have uh, you know emerged over the uh, years financial modeling financial econometrics and financial analytics so i would like to dedicate today's session on these three themes on their introduction and what they are and how what is their focus areas what is their applications what are their requisites and what are their methods that are there obviously we have limited time so i will look to give you a good introduction regarding all these and then i would also provide you some good references and direction to get started with so we all know that in the field of uh, in today's time if you look in generally also the decision making in the wider field of management and commerce has switched from that there, there was an entire generation there is an entire generation still who is making an entire decisions based on subjective judgments intuitions gut feelings it's not to say that those things have not worked out well but you see that entire decision making in today's time has shifted to be data driven data driven analytics driven analytics is able to provide those deeper insights you also see the that in reflection in the emergence of the fields of data science analytics machine learning and all these things so these fields have emerged wherein the decision making in commerce business management is more linked to data science uh, yes parul ma'am uh, anything so the data based decision making approach that has come up in modern times has gone into every field if you see in marketing there is now marketing analytics hr and, and even in hr you will see hr analytics and uh, in even uh, in the recommender systems that we use for for example you look into any product on amazon and you find several similar matches you log into a movie or a show on any ott platforms like netflix amazon prime video and so on many hot stars so many indian and foreign platforms and you see many similar shows coming up on your even you, even if you order some grocery you see similar items so all of this is based on data and insights from data so the field of data science and analytics has increasingly come up and not just for you know behavioral not just for quantitative and mathematical and engineering and natural sciences but also for social sciences for the first time there is a wide scale integration of social sciences with data science analytics and in this wave there is also the commerce business management field in broader level 
that is getting affected. So you see, you now days you would not wonder if a political science student is learning R programming, or if a film studies student or language literature student is learning Python. So all this level integration is happening. And in the same way, all these fields have also come into finance, also come in contact with finance. So we have, this has led to emergence of these areas, financial modeling, econometrics, analytics. Another in the background, I would also like to say that uh, there is now availability of data on a large scale that we call big data. So there was, the data was available at best at sparse frequency. Now the data is available at a huge frequency. For example, if again, I take example from retail and marketing businesses. So you see there are every day, there are millions of transactions that are happening on digital payment platforms, on uh, online uh, uh, OTT platform. Simultaneously, there are techniques to analyze those data that has been developed over the years. It perhaps techniques were there for a long time, but there was not availability of data. And there was also not availability of computing power. Nowadays, another big thing that has happened apart from data is that now there is computing power available. So you have, a deep, I know, I remember eight, seven, eight years ago, uh, about 10 years ago, when I started doing my research post my PG, we had uh, some few limited softwares available. Uh, for data analysis, which had to be, which were not customizable. And we had, and they were all licensed versions. We had to run from pillar to post to get access to those softwares and then carry out some analysis. This was 10 years ago. And softwares in finance domain, you would know, uh, which have been used traditionally like eViews or Stata. In other domains of marketing and human resource, we have used softwares like uh, SPSS, so SPSS or this uh, smart PLS and all this. So now there are open source softwares available. So Excel has developed much more in terms of modeling capacity. And now there, now there is emergence of R and Python, which are open source software. And in which you can download any kind of package or from library in Python, and you can do analysis. So now the this transformation, you would wonder why is it taking place now? Because now the big data is available and now only we have developed computing power. It's just like you see, we always wanted to go outside our earth into other planets of solar system. But only when we have the resources, we have the means, that plan was always there. And the planets which we want to explore like Mars is also there, but when we have the resources, we have the technology, only then we can implement it. So similarly, when we have the data and we have the computing power to analyze those big data, are these things emerging? So with this background, let me now specifically, this background was slightly general also. Now let me specifically talk about financial modeling, econometrics and analytics. So many of you might be confused if you have heard about these three, uh, then you might be confused. I was also confused. Uh, and uh, uh, there is no clear cut demarcation that, you know, this is what financial modeling is. This is what financial econometrics is. This is what financial analytics is. And in fact, you will see that there are several, uh, you know, books and learning resources in which, for example, modeling, financial modeling would include econometric techniques also. Or financial analytics would also include some econometric techniques or modeling aspects. So there is no cardboard, uh, you know, red line and bifurcation that these three are distinct in this way. And it is very difficult to segregate because modeling means all kinds of modeling. Many of you would know it's, it also includes econometric modeling. It also includes some kind of analytics, uh, some kind of uh, modeling technique that is used in analytics that can also be called modeling. But still, there is some bifurcation and approach is particularly different. Techniques may be overlapping. For example, you will find that maybe a multiple regression technique is being used across the three. But 
the approach or the intention or the purpose with which it is being used is very different. And that differentiates the context and that provides the background. So let me start with financial modeling. One by one, we will explore these things. So basically, I would say that a financial model establishes relationship between financial variables through a spreadsheet-like function like MS Excel, and that can help in addressing business problems, financial problems, and forecasting. So, for example, the standard three statement financial statements that we develop, which are interlinked. So, in sheet one, we have the PNL trading and PNL account. In sheet two, we have balance sheet. In sheet three, we have cash flow statement. All the three are interlinked, and then we can carry out scenario analysis, sensitivity analysis. We can do forecasting of key financial ratios based on past statistical trends or based on management forecasts. So developing this kind of Excel-based model or spreadsheet-based. Excel is a product, but spreadsheet is the more generic term. So spreadsheet-based forecasting of financial variables, accounting variables of the company using interlinked models. That has been probably the key focus of financial modeling. And uh, that's why you will see in the industry when we call it, talk about, when we talk in the industry about financial modeling, that's what the focus is. And in fact, there are some professional certifications also available, like financial modeling and valuation analyst certification from Corporate Finance Institute in USA. And uh, there are three levels of financial modeling certifications available from uh, Financial Modeling Institute in Canada. So there is Associate Financial Modeler, there is Master Financial Modeler, there's Charter Financial Modeler and Master Financial Modeler. These three level certifications are available from uh, this FMI, Financial Modeling Institute, which is based in Canada. And there are also many local certifications going on in financial modeling. And across the board, you will find that the consensus is that spreadsheet-based analysis and forecasting of financial statements and their modeling and their uh, you know incorporating the assumptions about revenue expenses, developing an interlinkage between them and uh, incorporating various factors finding out true ratios and duo point analysis, which we teach basic ratio analysis and other and developing these kind of common size and uh, index numbers based trends for financial variables. So all this has been the focus of financial modeling. And also, uh, again, related to this in financial modeling, you can also think of uh, corporate finance issues like capital bursting decisions, capital burst evaluation. We have the project cash flows, so evaluation of them and using different methods like NPV, IRR, that can also be part of financial modeling. In fact, that is a proper part of financial modeling. Then capital structure decisions, that also evaluation of different capital structure choices that we do in leverage and the leverage analysis, EBIT, EPS analysis. All this can be also considered part of financial modeling. So all these exercises which are related to a company's financials, which are carried on through Excel or spreadsheet-based applications, these are essentially the core uh, you know, thing of financial modeling. That is the general understanding. And uh, uh, this has been uh, going on uh, for a long time now. There's a consensus around this. And this is very, very important if you want to, you know, develop the skill set of students because when they go on and whether they go on to do some equity analysis or corporate analysis or company risk evaluation or many other roles, job titles can be financial analyst or functional analyst. So in those job titles, the, there is heavy use of Excel and Excel-based modeling. That's why they are very popular also uh, among students from employability perspective. So 
foundations of this is basics of spreadsheet and finance functions in Excel and the concept of time value of money that is the central concept all we all know in finance and then applications is financial statements forecasting cost of capital capital first conditions yes and another one uh, another two things sorry i missed uh, what is the financial analysis of leasing and higher purchase decisions so those who have uh, taught or covered these topics in classes i got to cover this in one of the semesters at ramanujan college so this is also a very interesting thing and uh, it is quite similar to the capital bursting framework that we use so leasing and higher purchase decision evaluation and the major major application that i uh, wanted to discuss with you is the valuation part so valuation of <clears throat> equity and firm valuation so apart from the spreadsheet and applications part this equity and firm valuation that is a very very important part of financial model so we have all those and you know the this valuation as you know is the key pillar not only for mergers acquisitions wherever from time to time there is need for raising capital or even presenting the true and fair picture to investors shareholders there is time to time the need for valuation for a company so equity and firm valuation we know there are different models free cash flow to firm model cost of capital model adjusted present value approach and then there is uh, different levels of uh, decision making for example in dividend discount model for equity valuation we have constant growth constant dividend then varying growth rates and then constant growth rate so we have different models different types of situations and models so this equity and firm valuation is there and in financial statements forecasting and analysis as i told there are good top advanced topics like sensitivity analysis scenario analysis so all of them are also part of this financial modeling and further if you look then security analysis then bond valuation bond yields duration equity returns and risk adjusted returns that also can be done as you know many of them can be done again using finance functions itself <clears throat> then in portfolio management applications we have the construction of portfolios we have port efficient frontier we have the variance covariance matrix calculation of portfolio risk and return portfolio optimization like some of you if you have uh, been teaching decision sciences or quantitative techniques you would know that optimization and linear programming problems need to be in real life we need to address them through softwares like excel so similar to that is portfolio optimization so portfolio optimization is a very interesting and fascinating activity so portfolio optimization can also be done using spreadsheet and that will these all applications will be within the purview of financial model then in investment and retirement planning we can see the effects of we can develop financial models for different purposes for example we can develop a comprehensive model in which we can take into account various situations for example what if the rate of return that we are anticipating so we have a 20 30 year window so what if the rate of return that we are anticipating changes increases or decreases or our savings increases or decreases and you all know that the real currency and nominal currency is on the basis of effect of inflation so we know that uh, the real currency does real currency is after removing the effect of inflation and nominal currency is including the inflation amount so the difference between the two planning in real currency because someone will like that they have the same purchasing power after 40 years as 
one million rupees has today and having a nominal one million rupees is a different thing and having one million rupees with same purchasing power as today is a different thing because in 30 40 years one million what one million rupee can buy today will not be the same what one million rupee can buy after 30 years or 40 years then portfolio restructuring can also be very easily done using uh, these models that we can develop and even in the derivatives and options field so binomial and black shows pricing models and then option greeks and real options so again real options for evaluation of capital budgeting and investment decisions so for all these we can develop a model so what is essentially a model let me bring you back to this a model is something which is a replica of real life and once you develop it you just need to fit in some values and as you fit in the values all the other outcomes change and all other outcomes change and they behave accordingly so you need to just you need to develop such a structure that you change one input and all other inputs change accordingly so if there is a uh, before i go to financial econometrics i will stop sharing for a minute and i would like to share with you a financial model that i normally uh, discuss with my mba students So just give me a second, I will share with you. Meanwhile, if you have any queries or doubts, you can please post in the So this is a financial planning. Can you see my screen? The Excel screen? Yes, sir, we can. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So uh, this is a financial model that has been developed. So this is a very comprehensive uh, retirement problem thing that we take up so somebody is 30 year old now and wants to have enough money equivalent to 1 million after all taxes at the age of 65 and this is the anticipated inflation and this is the amount of return that he's going to expect it to generate through investments this is his initial 1 lakh dollars is his, is his or her initial savings that he wants to put in and this savings is in expected to grow at 2% because his salary and other income will increase over time. And this is the tax rates and everything. And inflation will average is expected to average around 3% over the long run period. So what should what amount should he start saving to get this 1 million after all taxes in real terms? Real terms meaning that what is the purchasing power of $1 million today he should have the he she should have the same amount which will have the equivalent purchasing power after 35 years so that he can consume same amount of products and services as one what 1 million dollar can buy today so for this we have developed a model and in this the beauty of this you can see is that this has been developed as a model. So if I change the inflation rate from 3% to 3.5%, your entire calculations automatically update. And if I you know, change it, you can see entire calculation will automatically update. 
so this has to be developed there is obviously a series of formulas interrelationships and uh, everything is linked to each other so but this is the beauty of this kind of model that you can change any input for example somebody is coming to you at not at the age of 30 but at the age of 25 then your calculations will automatically get updated somebody is coming to you at the age of 35 somebody's retirement age has been government is looking to increase retirement age as uh, india's population pyramid becomes inverse now by 2050 there is going to be 20 percent people above 60 years that is going to be a big burden so a good uh, strategy is to increase the retirement age so maybe some of the young ones by the time we retire retirement age is increased to say 70. so this calculations will automatically update itself so this is the idea of creating a model so that inputs can change initial savings we can change and uh, we can have one lakh sixty thousand dollars as starting and all the we can have the target balance as 15 1.5 million so accordingly everything will change so the idea behind developing a financial model is to do something like this okay so that was my discussion regarding financial modeling i hope i have given you an example and introduction of and it's conveying the, its applications now before i will now i will briefly cover financial econometrics because many of you who do research in finance would already be aware of financial econometrics and today's session is also primarily on financial modeling and analytics so i will pass over this quickly so financial econometrics as we know is the application of mathematical and statistical techniques to problems in finance so <clears throat> basic purpose and basic approach again because uh, especially financial econometrics and analytics will have a lot of things overlapping a lot of techniques you will see in both modeling in both analytics and econometrics but in econometrics the approach is to establish relationships to test theories so for example in economics we have for example my phd thesis was on macroeconomic variables and their impact on stock market so there are many macroeconomic variables inflation interest rate gdp industrial production oil prices exchange rate so how do these variables have an impact on financial markets that was my thing so testing relationship testing theories is the primary purpose the techniques may be similar, but the primary purpose in financial econometrics is to test theories, relationships, establish, try to find out what is there in the real life. Also, forecasting is also there, but that is also a part of it. The primary focus is on establishing relationship, testing hypothesis and theories, examining the effect of one variables or one set of variables on the other set of variables. That is the primary focus and intention and that that is what we do mostly in academic researches and that is why in academic researches we heavily use financial econometric techniques like all these techniques you have uh, you would be aware of correlation causality co-integration all these techniques we you know use uh, you can see this correlation regression granular causality pulse response variance decomposition co-integration ARDL model so basically what we are looking to do is to check the lead lag relationship some because of financial and economic variables some variables uh, occur in advance and their impact is visible to us after one or two quarters so for example there is a big investment today but the employment and the output and the economic outcomes of that will be visible after some time exchange rate depreciation or rupee depreciation will have a lagged effect on inflation because we have already what we are receiving today is the orders we placed three months ago 
especially for foreign transactions or foreign import and exports. So if the rupee is depreciating today, its impact will be visible in the next quarters. So we have this lagged effect in the field of economics and finance. So in, in fact, in business also. So impact of lags, the past values, the contemporary values, and then this IRF is how much of a shock. There's a sudden shock, for example, in March uh, 2022, Feb or March, Feb and, and March 2022, due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there was a huge spike in oil prices. Oil went to a record high of $129 per barrel. Now it is trading at about $70 per barrel. But at that time, it had gone up to $129 due to a sudden shock. So, what is the impact of shock that would have an impact on the markets? Or we know this, you know, oil prices will cause inflation. Inflation will cause interest rate hikes. Interest rate hikes will cause the market, the investments to so slow down, the consumptions to slow down, and that will have a negative impact on long run profitability and uh, revenues of the companies, and that will have a negative impact on stock returns. So there's a channel through which they function. And because of this channel, there is things happen after some time. So lag effects and basically the cause and effect relationships. And in the short run, that is in the immediate purview and in the long run, when we allow all variables to vary, not worrying about the concept of stationarity or removal of time trend. When we allow the variables to vary, in as they move as they are going on we allow them to go on in the following the time trend so long run and short run relationship contemporaneous relationship cause and effect causal using lags so all these topics and their methods and techniques have been the area of financial econometrics and huge amount of uh, huge volume of researches on these techniques and in their in, applications because financial data particularly has been available throughout so and these techniques and through softwares has been also available so these techniques have been implied in the academic researches and as i told earlier in academic research our primary purpose is to explore the relationship and test theories and to establish that this impacts this and to give to develop the body of knowledge and to give policy prescriptions and to give long run advices to management so from that perspective these techniques are very useful so some more examples that we can see of uh, these techniques is that uh, are the financial markets efficient to whether test whether we all know about Capam and APT theories in finance. So Capam is the capital asset pricing model. APT is arbitrage, arbitrage by pricing theory. Then volatility. Then what is the determinants of bond credit ratings? What is the determinants of sovereign credit ratings? So countries are also having the securities issued by countries also get credit ratings. What is the determinants of credit credit ratings issued by the countries by the local companies what is the determinants of real estate prices then long-run relationships modeling between prices exchange rates between different financial markets hedge ratios trading rules then uh, testing core spot or future market relationships testing the hypothesis so we all know that announcement of earnings and dividend additions what impact it has on the financial markets so all these uh, things we need to factor in also <clears throat> the markets are correlated amongst themselves also so you can see that uh, the Market, uh, for example, whenever the developed countries markets rise, then there is 
a positive impact on Indian markets. And due to the timing, you almost know that what has happened before the starting bell rings in India, you know what has happened in the Western markets. And if, they, if there is a negative sentiment there, you can almost be sure that Indian market will also open a little down if there is a selling clear cut selling across the board in developing markets. So the, there's a huge correlation between, and there's a very great impact between the markets and due to different time zones. We know in advance before our trading session. So what is the interlinkages between markets? So all these things can be explored using financial econometric techniques. And financial data varies uh, from the traditional economic data because for example, stock prices are available every second and quality is not an issue because nowadays we have the completely transparent electronic trading and there is no issue on, there is no issue of quality or manipulation completely transparent way they are reported and provided. And that is the basis of uh, the entire market. And people are staking their all lifelong savings in the financial markets. So they know that they can be trusted. But financial data is also a little noisy. Noisy because there is too much information. So sometimes when there's too much information, you can not hear the real thing or the relevant thing. So there's overload of information. And there are many random and sporadic events that also impact the movements of financial assets. But we need to segregate those from the long run and permanent and more stable and more meaningful patterns. So noisy is the disadvantage because too much information makes it crowded. And in that crowd, most of the things may be irrelevant and temporary. And we all know that financial data does not have normal distribution. And compared to economic data, the frequency is much more. The tools and methods of analysis is much better. But financial data is noisy, but also free from errors and data divisions. So a lot of times the questions are raised that how GDP is calculated, how inflation is calculated, whether those things are reliable or not, especially for countries having opaque systems like China. There is no transparency as to how the data is recorded and reported. So measurement mistakes and revisions is a problem. So, but that is not a problem in the financial data. And also, uh, we all know that uh, the types of uh, three, there are three basic types of data, which is cross sectional, time series, and panel. So, if units of study is the companies or individuals or nations that we are talking about. So, if the units of study is many and we are analyzing them at a single point of time, then it is cross sectional data. For example, for example, for the year 22-23, you are analyzing the data of 500 companies, BS, companies listed in BSE, BSE 500 companies. So this data is a cross-sectional data because there are many companies numbering up to 500 and you are taking them for a particular year. So this is cross-sectional data. Units, again, I mean, companies, individuals, for example, in behavioral sciences, we take survey. In social sciences, we take survey. For example, if we ask people how much, which kind of, uh, you know, common people, if we ask what movie genre they are interested in, and we take survey of 10,000 people across the demographics of India. So those 10,000 people will come under, with this study will be a cross-sectional study. Similarly, we take survey of investors, we take several companies, we take data of several countries. So different, we take data across industries. So D, when units of study, individuals, companies, industries, countries, economies are many, but all of them have been studied 
examined at a single point of time, we are talking about cross-sectional data. And when there is a single unit of study, which is being observed over time, then it is a time series data. So for example, uh, you are studying the financials of a company, single company. If there is multiple, then it will be different. Single company, single country, single individual, single portfolio pattern you are studying over the years, over time, then it is time series data. And when both units of study and are multiple and you are studying them over time, then it is panel data, a panel of data. So for example, in my PhD work, I studied the patterns of several stock indices and in the several stock indices, I took them over years, over two decades. So there is panel because there are several stock indices. So there are several units of study. And since I'm studying them over two decades, there is over time. So it is a panel of data. So you uh, need to you know, understand these three things. And uh, within panel also, if the time component is long, then we call it long panel or time series panel. And if uh, the cross sections are more, then we call it the short panel or cross sectional. So this is the thing then uh, for developing a standard financial econometric or econometric model. We first start from theory. We st first start the idea from theory, which comes from our previous literature, literature and body of knowledge in that domain. And then based on those that we formulate an estimable theoretical model. And for that theoretical model, we collect data. So theoretical model should specify what are the variables. And for that variables, those variables, we collect data, then we estimate the model. And if the model is statistically adequate, that is it meets assumptions, then we go on to interpret it and use it for further analysis. If it does not uh, you know, meet the statistical assumptions, then we need to reformulate it because there may be different problems you may have missed out on some important variable there may be you have, if you have missed out on some important variables there will be different problems like autocorrelation or heteroscedasticity if you have incorporated too many similar variables then you will have problem of multicollinearity then uh, and if you have not if you have taken the relevant variables but you have not presented them in the right way for example population gdp should be taken as log we should take log of GDP, log of population. And some variables should be taken in ratios. So for example, money supply should be taken in ratio as a percentage of GDP. So if you have not done that, then your model has does not have correct specification. So in that case, you need to go back and reformulate. So now I will start with the last part of the session, which is financial analytics. And uh, for this, so now let's talk about the latest thing that is there in the picture and it is called financial analytics. So application of analytical techniques, primarily which are also statistical as well as which are you know, com developed from computer algorithms to the problems and field of finance is what we are talking in financial analytics. So in uh, financial analytics, we are looking at several problems that if you look at this, then the perspective is different. So here we are now looking at problems which are more about prediction and forecasting. So for example, in uh, financial analytics, you will be looking at problems like, is this customer a good credit risk? Is this company 
a good credit risk, a classic financial analytics problem that we try to decide what is the probability that a particular person or a company based on their financials and other records will default if we go ahead and give them the loan. Especially, similarly, which kind of customers in the banking and financial services industry out of the entire uh, you know, database of millions of customers, which are the customers which whom we should target, whom we should approach for providing say credit card or loans, offer loans, personal loans, whom should we target? Because you all must be receiving some calls from credit card pre-approved loans and credit cards, but use of analytics will greatly fine tune this and it will enable much more targeted approach. Similarly, there would be much more applications I would discuss about that. But for, uh, for example, another major application of analytics is to develop algorithmic trading. So computer-based trading rules you have developed. So even when you just need to have a good internet connection and leave it at that, even when you are parting and holidaying in some other place, you, your money will remain invested and it will keep growing because you have provided the right set of trading rules and instructions to the computer. It will automatically execute. Strategy you will have to formulate, but the means of implementing those trading and investment strategy is now available to you and that will get automatically executed. So algorithmic trading, many people have gained a lot using algorithmic trading, particularly when done using options and other derivatives. So financial analytics is use of cutting edge technology, algorithms, along with statistical models and techniques to financial data and investment problems and corporate problems, corporate finance problems. So, uh, you need to you know uh, be good in these three things because this field as you know is an amalgamation of different things so first of all our primary subject matter which is the knowledge of finance and investment needs to be good then some basic statistics and mathematics you should have uh, you should be aware of though uh, you know what i have seen in industry and real life is that after a certain level the use of statistics and mathematics when you are playing on the field. When you are playing on the field and when you are doing things in real life, the use of statistics and mathematics takes back seat. So, but still, the more knowledge you have, it is better for understanding, developing the understanding and developing insights. So, subject matter is important and then coding is also very important because you will be able to execute those commands using R, Python primarily. In fact, by many of the things, if you want to do some analysis, statistical modeling, then R is preferable. Otherwise, if you want to go for cutting edge things like machine learning, algorithmic trading, then Python is good. And don't fall into the Gigo trap. So Gigo trap is uh, garbage in, garbage out. So mindlessly, don't put anything into the software, whether R or Python, because if you put it like that, then you will get irrelevant outputs, which have no relationship. You will have predictors which have no meaning. There have You will have results which have no practical utility. So you need to apply your mind as to what you are trying to gain, what you are trying to know, and what you are trying to provide as input. So before uh, this, uh, you know, I would like to tell you about a little bit about uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence and all that. <clears throat> so uh, machine learning is basically, and in fact, before machine learning, I would like to talk about artificial intelligence a little. 
because artificial intelligence is the biggest thing. So see, uh, basically we all are we are all intelligent beings. We are we as human beings have our natural intelligence of varying degree and over life also our intelligence changes and evolves. And nowadays there are a lot of other types of intelligence also. It's not just traditional mathematic or arithmetic intelligence. It is emotional intelligence. It is visual intelligence. Many other, uh, you know, eight, some people say there are eight or nine types of intelligence. So when we see that intelligence in the, when we try to pass on that intelligence to machines and softwares, then we are talking about artificial intelligence. For example, when we see a person, then instantly, due to their facial pattern and the uh, you know, face features, we recognize that this person is Mr. X or Miss X or Mr. Y or Miss Y. So if we pass on that power, computer software for example there is face recognition softwares in front of them if you go they recognize the pattern of your face and they will say that this is miss Kamna that is coming here so and that is i'm and that is going to be the most you know uh prominent way of uh, doing things in future because uh, nowadays, signature and uh, fingerprints are not going to work. Face recognition and fingerprints is going to be, and biometrics is going to be. In fact, in our whole Aadhaar card system is built on biometrics. So there is technology that, like human eye and mind coordination, when we recognize another person by their face. Similarly, eye and mind coordination, that intelligence we are passing on, through programming to a software. So this is one example, face recognition. Similarly, voice recognition. The way we speak, everyone's voice is little different and how they pronounce things is little different. So based on the pattern, they can recognize, machine can recognize that this is the voice of this person. So voice recognition, face recognition, Fingerprint and all is already a very common thing now. So this intelligence, which was earlier only with human beings, is now being passed on to machines. And there are many other areas of artificial intelligence. I am starting with artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence is the broadest of all these things. As you can see, the biggest circle is of artificial intelligence. Within that, everything else falls. Uh, long back artificial intelligence or based or AI based computers or bots defeated the planet's smartest human being in chess, in game of chess. So it's not that these are just, just manual things. Game of chess, you know, it's a very completely strategy and uh, planning and anal analysis based game, intellectual game. Even in the game of chess, long back, the AI bots have defeated the number one chess player on earth, the best human being on, for chess. So this type of intelligence has gone you know, to different level. We also have IoT, Internet of Things. So you are going for work and uh, before you come back for work, you find milk at your doorstep or eggs at your doorstep. How, what has happened? While you were working at office, the camera in your fridge automatically detected the level of milk and eggs in their respective slots. And they found that eggs are too few or milk is too less. And it automatically connected with the ordering message and a message order was sent to the local grocery shop or order was placed through software. And the local grocery shop delivered those milk and eggs. And you can even give, give payment control. So payment can also be done. And before you reach home, your milk and eggs and bread and whatever you need is lying at your doorstep. 
So artificial intelligence is going to deeply and this 5G rollout, you have already, you must already be aware that 5G technology is now in India. It is rolled out. It will take time, six months up to one year to stabilize and be available at mass scale like 4G or 3G. But all these things will be supported by 5G technology. So artificial intelligence from, if you think from chess perspective, and there are many things. Self-driving cars in Europe, a fleet of trucks pass through very difficult to navigate hills. A fleet of entire trucks pass through a very tough terrain through hills, crossed the border of countries. And you know, that entire fleet of trucks did not have a single human driver. They ran completely based on software technology that is there. So self-driving is also an application of AI. They can just like driving requires human intelligence to be able to see something coming and everything, you know, the logistics of road. So similarly, that was there. So AI is widespread, great utility across the domains. Now, when we are talking about the field of uh, business and commerce and uh, finance, then we are looking at the applications in machine learning. So what is machine learning now? Machine learning is that your algorithm learns from the patterns. So for example, it learns from the patterns of past data that who are doing well, who are responding well, who are more likely to buy. So for example, it looks into the pattern of uh, consumers and investors and financial investors and shareholders and finds out who are the good targets, what characteristics qualify some individuals as more approachable and for as individuals for whom the outcome is more likely to be positive. It also in investment field, if you see, which kind of investment strategies are going to bear more fruit? Which kind of investment strategies, like you see, there are so many option trading strategies. So which kind of investment strategies are going to give more returns and lesser risk on most cases. What will happen in real life is uh, this cannot be predicted with certainty by anyone. Nobody can claim that. But which is the most likely strategy to give good returns and minimize risk? So machine learning applications can help in discovering these things. And the applications that I talked about of uh, facial recognition and voice recognition and image recognition, they come in deep learning because they, you know, your face is bifurcated to the minutest detail. So they will say that this is a match or this is not a match. Data science and machine learning have a lot of overlapping. Data science is application of statistical techniques. Data science is more similar to econometrics. So application of Again, predictive techniques, statistical predictive techniques to the field of business, commerce, management, and social sciences through this kind of, you know, softwares like which can handle big data. For example, uh, in elections now in India, there's huge population and not all are online, but in elections related to board meetings or shareholder meetings or small groups, they analyze the pattern and they try to find that which voter should we really approach because there is marketing cost and there is advertisement cost. So which are the more likely voters? Which demographics are likely to yield more favorable votes for us in any kind of election versus which kind of other groups which are not so going to change their stand. So everywhere now data and data science is being used. 
in healthcare industry data science is heavily used now so which kind of patients for example during covid which kind of patients are more vulnerable to ending up getting in icu or critical stage due to covid so based on data it was identified that patients with comorbidities and patients above a particular age it was a consistent pattern across nations that these are the age groups and these are the patient criteria which are more, uh, very much vulnerable still unfortunately they are aware that of maybe maybe young person who had no comorbidity that, that that cannot be explained so telling that person with comor comorbidities and above a certain age are more vulner vulnerable doesn't mean that somebody who is young and has no comorbidity uh, cannot end being end up being serious lay ill due to covid but which are more likely because that provides much more greater you know insights to us so data science and machine learning being quantitative techniques and are being applied across the board in healthcare social sciences marketing advertising digital media and in fact for example there is a field called text analytics so text analytics is also used in accounting for analyzing companies financials and it is also used in uh, say uh, for example for political purposes so uh, uh, before a political rally you find out the users from that area based on their geographical location and see what is the trending topic what is the hot issue in that area and then the analysts give input to the political leaders that these are the issues which are hot which are relevant now so they those issues are deliberately touched upon in the election rallies in that area because issues may be local and they may vary from state to state so those issues those sentiment of people there is also a technique called sentiment analysis so all these things even the social media posts are being analyzed for political purposes so data science machine learning is being greatly used in all these endeavors and machine learning techniques can be supervised or unsupervised so supervised is basically when we are trying to predict something and unsupervised is something when we are trying to find a pattern or correlation and uh, so data science is basically you know there are three fields computer science and it maths and stats and domain or business knowledge so if you look at the intersection of domain knowledge with maths and stats which is traditional research domain knowledge with maths and stats techniques we have traditional research and this traditional research will be primarily our uh, techniques like financial econometrics then if the domain knowledge goes with computer science and it then we have this entire software it and it enabled services industry then they go into software development and when this domain business knowledge computer science techniques and maths and stats computer science app softwares algorithms and maths and stats all three converge then we have the field of data science here you have domain knowledge also like i told you earlier also for financial analytics you need finance investment knowledge software r programming python programming knowledge and knowledge awareness of maths and stats techniques then you have analytics or data science domain and if it is only computer science and maths stats techniques then it is machine learning so uh, these things are there and uh, you know uh, we can we can go on and on and on in this uh, but uh, in financial analytics again uh, we use data through information technology and techniques to make business decisions so some of the applications i have already talked about sentiment analysis algorithmic trading asset price prediction portfolio evaluation investment advisory and robot uh, you know uh advisors and uh chatbot digital assistant that you see on websites then text analytics for qualitative data for example the annual report of companies so we can do some text analytics on that then derivatives pricing interest rate 
fraud detection uh, while underwriting. So if the risk is high, so underwriting means deciding at what whether to give a loan or insurance to a particular case or not, and at if yes, at what rate. So in that, you take into consideration the past record and the probability of default. If the probability of default is too high, you may not lend it at all. And if it is less, then you may lend, but still with some conditions. And tax compliance uh, and money laundering is also detected. So many people you would have heard nowadays that they are uh, going, they are spending money abroad and they are uh, holidaying and they are buying some new vehicles. And based on that, the income tax department is based on their social media posts. Income tax department is able to catch those people. So there is analytics working at all places. All your bank accounts are linked with PAN card. And you're all, you know, wherever you do, whatever you do is, uh, there's a huge uh, net that is around you and that can be detected. Any inappropriate income or expenditure is immediately caught. Trade settlements and blockchain and fintech, cryptocurrencies and fintech, so blockchain helps a very good application of blockchain is in safeguarding documents. For example, you may have heard about the concept of DG Locker. So in DG Locker, blockchain technology is used to secure documents and certificates. The certificates that you will get from Ramanujan TLC programs is protected and secured by blockchain technology. Cryptocurrencies you are already aware of and fintech we all use in our daily lives, Paytm, Google Pay and all those companies. The technology we are using, which you know, in the instant moment, we don't even need to take out cash and count it. But in seconds, we are making digital payments. So this entire fintech is there. And uh, since time is approaching to end the session, finally, I would like to give you some references to for all these. So for financial modeling, you can use a traditional book, which is financial modeling using Excel and VBA. Uh, VBA is uh, now outdated, but it provides good. Excel part is good by Chandan Singh Gupta. And the latest one is uh, by Simon Bennings for Excel and R. Then for financial econometrics, two standard textbooks because it is a well-established discipline, basic econometrics by Gujarati and introductory econometrics for finance by Chris Brooks. And now this Chris Brooks book uh, not only includes EU's interface, it also includes R and Python interface. Then for learning R and Python, uh, a very comprehensive book I found is uh, Data Analytics with R and Python by uh, Dr. Bharti Motwani, she is an Indian author. And uh, for business analytics and machine learning, uh, you know, th these are some good references. And for finance foundations, uh, you can have uh, these books for because, you know, you should recommend the standard textbooks for finance, like Briley and Myers for corporate finance, Bodhi and Marcus Cain for investments. Hull and Basu for options. And for analytics, financial analytics, you can have these books, Mastering Python for Finance and Python for Finance, Financial Modeling and Quantitative Analysis. But these are not, you know, these are what I have found, but all these are constantly evolving and uh, uh, these are all coming up and growing. So this is a new field. So you will see many more latest additions and interfaces coming up so thank you everyone that